Hello, welcome to the table. My name's Jonathan Hicks. I'm Steve Rain, and I'm Mark Windle. And today is our top five games to play with kids. Now we had a little bit, a bit of debate, didn't we, about quite what any of this entails. Uh, essentially, in my mind, you want to play a game not just with the kids. You want to involve adults as well, but you want a game that the adults will enjoy and the kids will enjoy. You all want to play games. Mm -hmm. What's going to work best? So we've kind of gone through then and picked our top five games in this category. Yeah. So I didn't go for like kids games. I didn't go for games designed for kids. I, I play yeah. games that I will have. I will want to play myself. That I don't mind kids joining in with. I don't think it's going to be too uh, hard for them. I don't think it's going to spoil my experience either. Um, so that, that's sort of the game I've picked. Yeah, I, I think Steve's got it spot on with games that I still want to play with the kid. I'm not going to be sitting there bored going, I'm doing this just for the kid. Uh, I made sure games that I think fit with their time limit, I think for a kid, certainly on the first time playing. And some of my I tried to aim ones that you could progress further as the kid gets better. That was yeah. something I thought. It's yeah. not in all of them, but in a few that I thought it'd be nice that we can start this level as your first introduction game. But maybe in a few games time, we'll add a little thing yeah. here and there on. I've gone with Mark on the time. I think none of my games are particularly long necessarily, so they're not quite fillers, um, but they are quite short games generally. Okay. Some of mine. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I will make a prediction now. I do not think there'll be any crossover. Uh, I'm thinking there might be one. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I thought about when doing this though is, as my son's, <clears throat> excuse me. As he's grown up, I've been like, oh, I want to play games with my son. What game can I play with him? And as he's got older, you sort of introduce more and more games. But um, if you're stuck for games to play with kids, like your own kids, uh, then hopefully there'll be, some good, there'll be some good ideas on the list. Before we go any further, Jonathan's son played Terra Mystica when he was seven. <laughs> yeah. So, so he's not the typical child. And on the opposite end of the scale, I have nothing to do with children, so my list is already invalid. <laughs> uh, well, let's have a look. Yes, let's get to it. <laughs> Marvellous. It's number five. All right, my first pick for number five uh, is an oldie but a goodie, I think. Kids in general love trains. I don't know why it is, uh, but Ticket to Ride, and in particular, I would go with the Europe version of Ticket to Ride, I think is great to play with kids. Uh, even very young ones, it's super easy to get the idea of, you know, oh, I've got some cards and I spend the colours to put the trains on the track. And even if they don't really understand the points, they can still enjoy putting all the trains out and that's great. But obviously as they get older, they get far more into the point scoring. And you can play Ticket Ride with a group of adults, you know, with proper gamers, and it becomes like a really serious game. You can compete very strongly with this. So, you know, I've played it a lot often when introducing friends to games, and often kids have been involved as well, and it just works well. The adults are like, oh, okay, yeah, I think I get this, and they try and do well. Um, but Europe's not too punishing. So I like that particular brand of Ticket to Ride because um, you're not going to get sort of cut out too much from the different routes. Uh, that's a great pick. Uh, so many people come into the cafe and uh, we suggest that to them, if there's, especially if there's five as well, if you've got a game for five people. Yeah, yeah. Um, it scales up really well. The map, the Europe map we have in the cafe, it scales up really well and the kids love it. You know, so much so that their parents often end up buying it on the way out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to jump slightly on, number, on this one because my number five is also Ticket to Ride. Ah, oh. Also specifically because uh, if it's a young kid, there is First Journeys and the recently released New York ones with yeah, smaller maps. Right. So if you want to maybe introduce a slightly younger age child, you can play Ticket to Ride if you like and still get the experience. But I mean, I think with most kids, you could just play the basic version and it's fine because I don't think... Yeah. It might be a little bit longer, but ultimately they're still the same simple game. The only difficulty is the routes. Mm. Designing which route cards to pick at the start is tricky. Mm. Um, but you can just tell them, just pick one of them and discard the rest and it won't really matter yeah. too much. You could pick. I've already lost my bet that there'll be no crossover, <laughs> so I would like to cut that out later maybe. Uh, so my number, my number five is a uh, short kind of stacking game called Number Nine. Uh, so number nine is a game where you kind of go through sets of numbers twice and someone will pull out a number out of, you know, a random number and they'll say three and then basically everyone gets a number three shaped, you know, like a number three and they put it in their grid, they put it, they put it in a pile there and then every number they get thereafter they're trying to either place adjacent to stuff they've got filling in gaps or place it on top. And so when you place it on top, you have to place it on top so there's no gaps underneath. So you need all the previous numbers, the three and the seven and the six that you've already placed, to, to leave kind of like a solid foundation so you can place numbers on top of it. And once you get to the second level and third level, that's where you start to score points. And I like it because even hardcore game, it's a really simple game to explain. You put them there and you're trying to get them as high as you can. And depending on which number you've got and which level, you get a certain number of points. But it's really easy to think. Even, how, even people who've gained a lot of time... Constantly think this, no, twist, twist, twist. And kids would be the same. Kids would be like, okay, 
they might not put it in maybe in the best place, but they're thinking, they're always thinking about where they're going to do it. They never, it's never too easy for them. It's never too hard. They can, there's definitely, there's definitely places they can put it. They're trying to think of the best place, and they can think as hard as they want to do it and, and get something out of it. How do they do? It's got the, that thing in games which I really like, which is where everyone has been given the same piece of pieces, same set of pieces in the same order, but then after just a few rounds, they're already looking very different yeah. in terms of what you decide to do with it. Uh, and yeah, you've got complete freedom, don't you? So I can yeah. see how it works. Yeah, I agree. I, um, because it's not hidden, as in we've all got the same one to play, yeah. it doesn't matter if a kid goes, can I do that? Yeah. It, it, it stops yeah, yeah, that yeah. being an issue because it's not hidden. If it is, And they can go, no, you can't do it because of that. And they'll go, oh, can I do that? Yes, you can do that. And then the next time they kind of get that and that helps a lot. Yeah. Well, I never. It's number four. Uh, so my number four is a small little dice rolling game that I picked up from Essen last year. And it got to the point where when I first played with Jonathan, he thought this isn't going to be any fun at all. Uh, it looked like a kid's game, but it isn't. It's Harvest Dice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and in Harvest Dice, it's a bit of like, a, uh, like the, you roll some dice that are going to give different... Um, numbers to three different types of vegetables and you, you can have a five lettuce or a three carrot or a one tomato and you're planting them in your field but once you've planted tomatoes in the one column you can only place tomatoes adjacent to the ones you've already built and you're trying to fill in this patch of field by drafting the dice as they're going around and they kind of deplete and you think what's going to come back to me and it's got all those things like Sagrada is a very complicated not complicated necessarily but a very thinky game this is not but there's still some skill in it and you're trying to fill the vegetable patch the best you can so you're doing there's a bit of a stock market as well so certain vegetables increase in price the ones that lots of people are taking won't increase in price because there's been nothing left to increase them and so you've got that kind of balancing act and I've played this with Alex and I've played this with kids I've played with lots of different people and everyone really gets into it there's not there's not much downtime yeah. um, and it's really clear to see what you're going to do that five can only go in the five column and it's green so it's a lettuce and put it there. You can always feed the pig as well. So if you can't do anything, if you've, if you've mispicked some dice and you've picked bad things, you just take a dice and you feed it to the pig. That will score you some points too. Yeah, it doesn't punish you at all really, does it? It's great in that sense. It looks, uh, as Steve was saying, too simple really. I was like, oh, do I really want to play this? So that, particularly because Steve always makes you draw the vegetables. You can't just write C for carrot in the column. You actually have to try and draw a carrot. But actually, it's great fun. And I, the more I played it, the more I liked it. It's a very well designed. Yeah, it's game. a really good pick. I didn't think of it at all, but it it, it does work well. It's easy to pick up. Yeah. Uh, you're filling out a field all the time, and it makes perfect sense. It works with gamers who are happy to play it, and, uh, and, and new gamers and kids and adults who don't play games at all. Mm. Okay, uh, so my number four, I think, would... Depends on the age and this one, how much you need to link, but it would be my first introduction to a kid to a sort of pushy look game because it looks beautiful, and that's Celestia. I think Celestia, mm -hmm. it's got a few slightly more complex cards I think you could remove, and obviously the adults might want to tone down the bluffing, but ultimately <laughs> you're going, I've got, that person's got this number of cards, do you think he's going to be able to match those symbols in that many cards? And if you keep it along those lines, and again, if you only if you don't go too far, kids should be able to look and go, Avengers start going, well, he's only got three cards, he's got these two symbols, he's got no chance, and jump straight off. I think you can have a very various amount of fun as, you know, your your dad or uncle's yeah. Uncle Dave or whatever, so it's, so it pushes his luck and the kids all bail out and then he crashes invariably and they have a bit of a yeah. laugh. And that's the other thing, it's funny, it makes yeah. the other kids laugh and that makes them more engrossed. And it's got a lovely little flying airship that kids are going to go, ooh, and then yeah. they're going to break. So <laughs> I thought about this as a push your luck game. I think push your luck games are great. Mm -hmm. I wanted to put a push your luck game on the list. Uh, Celestia was not my pick, but it's great because push your luck games, the kid will know, you know, when you push your luck and you ah, it's all my own fault. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not to do with the game, I haven't been done in by superior play. It's, I was, I, you know, I've just gone too far. Next time I won't. Oh, will I? But if I go one more far, I'll get 10 more points. And you've got that dilemma. And so even the person who plays the best with the odds and anything doesn't necessarily win this game because you could just get lucky or unlucky. Yeah, mm. as a category, push your luck. I think it's, it's great. With yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of push your luck, my next one is a push your luck game. Uh, it's a bit more complex though, it's called The Adventurers, and essentially it is Indiana Jones in a box, as they always say. Um, it's the scene where there's the big boulder sort of rolling through the temple and chasing him. You are these adventurers and you go in and you're just trying to run through the temple, grabbing as much treasure as you can and get out before the boulder sort of follows the path around and crashes against the door and locks you in or rolls over you, in which case you die. Um, but there's a nice me mechanism whereby the more treasure you pick up, the slower you go. 
And on the flip side, the boulder starts off moving very slowly, but as the game turns go by, the boulder picks up speed and goes faster and faster. So at the start, the boulder is just creeping along and you're grabbing all this treasure and running through. It's like, hey, this is easy. <laughs> you get about halfway through and you're like, oh crumbs, I'm not moving very fast anymore. Oh my goodness, that boulder's <laughs> really picking up speed. And it's like, I don't think I'm gonna get out. There's several nice little areas. You can kind of stand on a bridge and you're kind of trying to jump up and grab the idol from above the bridge. But every time you try, some planks are falling down. Um, the components are really nice, um, but essentially you're just collecting treasure cards and whoever has the most points and treasure at the end wins. Um, but it's great fun, the kids love it. They can immediately see, oh yes, you've got to run through and avoid the boulder. They just get it immediately. Um, so when you said the adventures, I'm like, I don't, I've never heard of this, but I have heard of that game that you described. Yeah. Um, and I can imagine thematically that would draw anyone in, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're still of the age of Indiana Jones, and that's <laughs> definitely, yeah. even for us, that's still going to be great. Extraordinary. It's number three. Uh, so for my number three, I've gone for a really nice, simple, but fun dice game that we end up talking about quite a lot called Quicks. Oh, okay. yeah. Quick. Yeah. You roll some dice, you're, you're marking off some things on a sheet, you're trying to fill out as much as possible. Nice and simple. There's a couple of other rules, but fundamentally it's a really simple game to play. But because it's, I mean, it's just, it's it's better Yahtzee. I mean, it's not actually Yahtzee, it's not that like yeah. But think of when, like, when I was a kid, I was playing Yahtzee and rolling dice. It's that, but a much better game of marking stuff off. And there is more strategy in there, and it becomes more obvious the more you play it. But because it's so quick, you can play it three times in a row, and everybody's fun and have a good time. It's roll good. and right is a nice mm. category, I think. Yeah, and roll and right where you're doing something on other people's terms as well. So if yes. you've got like quite a few people playing, I, in some Roll and Ride games like Yahtzee, I do all my rolling and then I sit back and I wait. And you might watch what they're doing, but you don't have to. You can sit back and wait. But in this, when on Jonathan's turn, I might get to cross something off. And it might be the number I've been waiting for, which would be brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Good job. It's just nice simple. Yeah, I like it. And it's, um, it's nice, uh, Ganshan clever, pretty clever. Yeah, pretty clever. it's not got the, the mental clo the no. combos. So that I think pretty clever that. will be fine in terms yeah. of what the kid could do, but they're just gonna the, in terms of like trying to work yeah. out all the combos and the progressive scoring. Yeah, it's too much to know. Yeah. Well, that's a great game. Yeah. All right, my number three is uh, from one extreme to the other. It's cash and guns <laughs> because essentially every kid wants to sit and point a gun at someone else and try and shoot them. I mean, even when we're not playing a game, my son and his cousins are running around shooting each other anyway. So you tell them, right, we're going to do an activity together with adults and you give them guns and they're like, yeah, this is great. And they just have a great time. I mean, if you've not played it effectively, it's a kind of Mexican standoff in a game. So there's a bunch of treasure or loot that's laid out in the middle. Everyone sort of three to one point the gun at someone and then if lots of people are pointing at you, you have an opportunity to sort of put your gun down and run away, in which case you avoid getting shot. Um, some of them have like uh, blanks in, so to speak, so the guns don't go off. So even if someone's pointing at you, they might not shoot you. So there's all that kind of gamble. But then whoever's left in gets to divide up the loot amongst themselves and you just have a few rounds of that. It's very simple to play, uh, but the kids just have a blast and no one really cares. It's one of those where... You know, in some games, if the kid loses, it's a bit like they get upset and it's like, oh no, do I really have to go through this again? But no one cares at the end of this because the fun is just the pointing the guns at each other. And honestly, at the end of it, no one's got a clue really who's won. So it's, um, I think, a really great game to play with anybody, including kids. It's a great call. You just have fun. And, you know, you, you, you've got that story where you braved it, three people pointing yeah. at you and they all fired blanks. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I got in there. Uh, or that time where you just get, I just kept shooting dad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you, you've got to play with the right kid there. I think there might be some kids who would not like getting shot even once. I said that is true. The only issue is potentially there's player elimination. You do have three lives. Yeah, if you get shot three times, you're out. But even if you just... Some, some people might not like getting shot once. Some kids who don't, you know, don't like that sort of thing. So you've got to be careful. I'm also concerned that groups of kids would just... I'm just always going to stay in. Yeah. Because I always want to see. Yeah. And then you're like the adults just sitting there going, I think I've won by default to the three kids of all. <laughs> Shot each other. But other than it's still it is, it's it, hilarious and it's that's a good definitely thing. Definitely good fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um number three. Mm. Uh, so my number three is an older game than any we've mentioned so far. It's a game I played as a kid. Um it's a game called, you know, Accounting and Strategy. And it was the original winner of the Spiel de Ara, and that's uh, Hare and Taurus, which I know you've played and I yeah. played that with Noah. Yeah, um, and we you know we had a good time. And Heron taught us you're kind of you're racing around the track using carrots as currency. And the more carrots you've got, the further you can move. Um, but to get carrots, you need to be in the right position in the race. You can kind of miss some turns to pick some carrots up. And it's a game 
that, that involves a lot of maths. So it's a lot of maths about, you know, well, I can move a few spaces back to gain some carrots, and then I can use those carrots to move this further forward. Well, if I move one extra space back, can I go forward? Um, and what I like about it is, uh, it's just forward planning, basically. You, if you finish on a spot with a two on it, if you start your next turn in second place, you get bonus carrots. And carrots are what you need to get to, to the end. But if you start, if you finish on these five space, you think in the five player game, I'm currently last, I'm gonna go into that five, I'm gonna be last at the end of my next turn, then someone else will say, he can't get all those carrots, I'm gonna drop back behind him. And you've got this race, and it's a race where you can go forwards and backwards, it's just a really weird thing. And the hard part, the reason that it, there is some strategy there, is that you can't finish the race with more than 10 carrots. Yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you can think, oh brilliant, I'm gonna stay back and get whole tons of carrots, and go really fast, and like, I've actually got too many to finish the game. I've just got to wait and you kind of get rid of them. Um, so yeah, I quite like it. And I, I'm, not, I'm not sure you have the same opinion of the game as me. <laughs> it's a good game. And I think when it came out, it was probably a very good game. I just feel like it's aged a bit now. Possibly. I Possibly. wonder if it just if it was kind of rethemed or reskinned or something. It just looks it has quite been dated. The, the, board, it it has, the board I have is <laughs> probably one. the board I have is probably from the eighties. So is there, an is is there a hot cool. air balloon version or something? I can't remember what it is, but they have rethemed yeah. it very okay. recently. Um, I remember playing it as a kid and I liked it and I played it with my brothers and we played it quite a lot as a kid so it's not necessarily a game that has aged well but it's a game that I remember fondly for me and kid myself. I've, I've only played it with you once but I think it's fine, it's, it's certainly good for kids, it's certainly more in, in, interesting than like a bog standard Hasbro or something like, like that, there is something yeah. to it. Yeah, it's not the greatest game on time but it works well for what it's meant to be. Ah, spiffing, it's number two. All right, my pick for number two is not short at all. And essentially, I wanted some game where a lot of kids just want to get some kind of like toy soldiers effectively and fight each other. And I think the game that does that the best, hands down, is Heroescape. Now, the only difficulty is actually getting hold of this thing because it's out of print. You can get um, copies of the base game fairly easily on eBay these days. Getting expansions is more difficult. But you can combine copies of the base game together, and even just the base game I think works fine. You basically get a few different armies, and it's a super simple war game. It's all hex-based, you kind of fit the um, various terrain tiles together, a bit like Lego. Um, but then on your turn, you sort of take one group of your people, you know, a squad of soldiers or something, you move them some in some spaces, and then you say, right, they're going to attack by shooting these people, and you just roll dice. They don't even have numbers on. You have, like, skulls or hits and shields or defences or something, and it's like if you roll more skulls than they roll shields, then you do some damage and kill their units. So it's super simple, but it looks great on the table. And honestly, half the fun is just building the maps. I do have quite a lot of stuff for it. Um, I, you know, we spent you know, a couple of hours sometimes with my son uh, building these huge maps. You can get different levels and stairs, and there's all sorts of different terrain in terms of like castles and things. Um, so it's an absolute blast. If you can get your hands on a second-hand lot of this, um, I highly recommend it for playing with kids. They love it. Yeah, I guess it's the barrier to entry that I haven't played it yet. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not going to go and buy that. No, and, no, uh, indeed. And I guess it's not the sort of thing you're going to want to play particularly. But I think for war gamers, though, a war gamer would quite happily play yeah. Like two other war gamers could have a serious war game with it. There's enough depth in terms of positioning and using the train and things. Um, to be worth playing. It's the setting up of the terrain that, that scares me. Well, actually, no one really likes doing that. Jonathan yeah. um, loves setting up the train. You think, and he'll go, Daddy, Daddy, are you done now? Can I, can I use the floor? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we turn our back and half of it's been built already. So, oh. yeah. yeah, I started by building it with him and then after a while I was like, okay, I've got stuff to do. Do you want to try building a map? He's like, oh yeah, I'll build a map this time. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Just left him to it. Yeah. Uh, so my number two is my push your look game, so I thought of a few, uh, and I, Celestia did pop into my head, but mine's uh, it's, uh, Picamino, um, Picon, P Picamino? Yes. Picamino? Heck, Heck is the version I've got, it's a German version, so I think it's Picamino, I don't actually know how to say it, but basically you're trying to collect worms. It's a dice rolling game, you're pushing your look, you're rolling the dice, and you, on, when you roll them you can keep any one number, so I can keep all the fives, or all the threes, or all the ones, or whatever. But once I've kept them, I can't keep them again. So if I ever roll, if I keep all the fives, and if I ever roll only fives later on, I bust. So the more numbers you keep, the more likely you are to go bust if you keep going. But obviously, you're trying to get a high total score. There are worms as well. You've got to roll, roll a worm to take it. But in the middle of the table, there are some tiles from 21 to 36. And they have progressively more worms on those tiles. And so basically, if I roll... 27, I can st I'm can. i going to stop now, I'm going to take the 27 from the middle and put it in front of me. And everyone else has a go. And so it isn't just that though, you're actually fighting for other people's tiles. If, if Mark then rolls 27, 
you can either choose to take a tile lower than 27 from the middle or a tile that's exactly 27 on top of someone else's pile. So you could take the tile of me. So you can kind of fight for other people's tiles. You can think, I'm going to go again because if I roll if I roll a 2, I can take that off that person there and I stop them from winning and stuff like that. Um, so I've played it with adults and I've played with kids and I've played with my family as well. Um, and in general, there's enough strategy for everyone to be entertained. I'm not usually a fan of much to take that, which you can feel a little bit like stealing all the top, but it works so well in that because I think it... Isn't it's not you roll twenty seven ultimately, yeah. and the right thing to do is it's to take it. It's not like you've done it intentionally to hurt somebody. You've just rolled that. You're not you, picking yeah. on people yes. specifically. You just happens to be that they've got a tile that matches what you've rolled. So. But it's a very fun game. I've not played it actually. I've not heard of it, but okay. not, not played it. Okay. You got a copy at the cafe? Yeah, but they, yeah. Dean Dean's got a copy as well. Dean, that's why I first played it, and I liked um, it so much. I bought it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll have to try it now. Okay, so my number two is my tar lane game of choice, and it's not Carcassonne. Yeah. Uh, it's a game that I've known about for a while, but only actually got to play for the first time very re recently with Jonathan. That's Karuba. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, it's a tar lane game, so it's fairly obvious. You're connecting roads. But ultimately, it also comes down to what we said earlier, is that because everybody gets the same tile, it, yeah. you're, the barrier to, well, can, am I breaking the game? Is 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 non non-existent? Yeah, there's some complexity. On, do I trade this in for movement, or do I trade this in for, or do I actually use the tile and make sure you don't do yourself in? But ultimately, it's it's a tile lane game, and it's probably easier to score than Carcassonne when it comes down to it. Yeah. And so I think it. I, I for me, I think I could play that with because because it is ultimately just pattern matching and making some roads. There's a few games like this where you're drawing them off the top and everyone uses the same one, where the decisions are easy, and this they're not. I've played some games where, like, take it easy, where you're putting them, and I after like that, after yeah. six turns, me and my brother had exactly the same grid. In Karuba, you don't. Generally, you've deviated after the first or second tile. Yeah, yeah. You've put it in different places, and you're hoping for different things to come out. Um, and that kind of... The, the complexity between do you move a guy or do you finish your room, and your guys can't pass each other, yeah. so you've got to build it in such a way that I should. I can't start moving them now, otherwise they'll block this other guy's route. I need to content, kind of make the route a bit wider or something like that. It's quite nice. It's very hard to make the best use of the options that you've been given. So you'll draw a tile which allows you to move one of your people three spaces. Oh, that's great. Three's quite a long way. But for various reasons, like the other guy's in the way, I can only move it two or something. Or he's about to get in the temple, so he can only move one. But I really want to get him into the temple because you're kind of racing to get the guys to the temple to get the points. So there's a lot of the tempting between, oh, this is not the best move, but uh, I think I want to do this. I think it's a fantastic game. But everyone's got the same choice. You've also got gold and, and diamonds and stuff in the card. You're putting it too, just so, what? oh no, it's got a piece of gold in it. If I use it for movement, I ain't going to get that gold. Yeah, yeah. That's great. I love that game. By Jove, it's number one. All right, on to our number ones. And I think, Steve, have you got a Steve question for us? Yeah, last TV show you watched, alphabetically. Okay, I watched... Ozark, I think, was the last thing I watched. Uh, I watched Disenchanted on Netflix. And I've started watching Bodyguard. Okay, so it makes me first. Mark myself, John. Okay, all right. So my number one had the tagline when it was on Kickstarter of, of easy to learn, lifetime to master. Uh, and like me, it's an abstract game, and it's Santorini. Wow. Yeah. Because okay. Santorini... First time you play, I mean, it's a, it is an abstract, but a very, a really simple abstract game that initially you can start with the basic rules because you, you get these powers, but you could just not play with the powers initially. So you could teach yeah, the first few games. Let's do the general moving and building and stuff. That's get that going. And then well, let's introduce the level one powers. You don't have to even use all the complex ones because there's three different sets. Yeah. So if you want to get boring, I reckon you'll be able to handle these powers. Even if you take a few out, you just want to keep it even simpler, but. You can build from a really, really simple base up to it, and it's a game I love playing. You can play as teams, so you could, uh, it's like mother and father, where you could each play as one kid each, you have two kids or whatever. And it, it's just got so much going for it, and it's so easy to pick up, but it's got a lot of a lot to offer. I love this game, and I actually considered it. It just missed out, I'm afraid. Um, Santorini is a great game, um, and I think there's a very like, the tactile nature of just stacking things mm -hmm. and moving yeah. stuff around the board there are some abstract games that kids could play but they're like dull this looks fantastic yeah. this you know the fact that you can go i'm gonna move there and block you yeah i got you and you can do that on a, a game that can mark says does evolve you can also play it four players and i think then you get the teamwork you're not allowed to talk to your partner about what he would like to do on his turn or vice versa and you can play with or without powers but you can set them up 
you can kind of position it in place to set them up, or they can be setting you up and you've kind of be on the same way and blank. My only concern, I suppose, because it's an abstract game, like many abstract games, is that if you've got someone who's much better than someone else, it's difficult to play with that person. Yeah. But I think, having said that, I think the first time I ever played this was the four-player game with all the powers. We just sort of threw everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, let's and have a little sun was there, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. And it was very chaotic, but actually it was a lot of fun as well. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't so much of a chess match, sort of mind versus mind. It was just like, I'll try and do this, and oh, his crazy power has undone what I've done. But <laughs> okay, I've got a crazy power too. I'll try doing this. And as it was just fun. So yeah, it just looks so good. I think it's yeah, a good choice. Uh, so my number one is uh, an abstract game myself, and it's an abstract game you can play with two or four people, um, and that is Blockus. And Blockus is a tile lane game, you're putting Tetris style pieces on a board and you're trying to try and get as many of your pieces out. There are some restrictions about how you can place them, you can't kind of place adjacent to your own stuff, but you've got to place diagonally adjacent. So you've got to, okay, you've got to spread out yourself, but you're going to do it in such a way that you kind of leave gaps. Um, and it's so simple to play that you can teach this to anyone, absolutely anyone, and they will know what to do. They will realize, well, if I go here, I'm going to get blocked in, so I have to go here, I have to try and squeeze through the gaps. Because generally two people can kind of coexist, but once you get that third person in there blocking all the stuff away, uh, you've got to do that. And so I've played this with people who don't game much, game a lot. I've played this at school with kids, and I think it's a fantastic little tile lane game. Um, it hasn't got much theme, so it might not attract the kids, but those people who... <laughs> <laughs> those people who, oh, yeah, <laughs> those people who uh, who do like you know just that kind of the visual visual and it just helps kids. So obviously, as a, as a teacher, you know, math teacher, you kind of you want that visual learning. You want that kind of this piece of twist, you know, in the head twisting before actually trying to place it on the board but on their turn. If I place it as their next turn, can I place this in that gap? Well, yeah, yeah, no, but it's just kind of getting him to think. I think it is good, and as an educational activity, it's very good. Um, it's not terribly exciting though, is it? I love it. <laughs> I guess it's the whole abstract thing. I mean, yeah. you do love your abstracts, yeah. don't you? I'm not quite so keen. But it's certainly a good... Uh, for a family, I've seen it go down very well with families, definitely. I've never played it. Oh. I'm aware of it, but I've never played it, so I wouldn't yeah. want to come You've in. played Gemblo. Yes, yes. And it's basically Gemblo, but slightly different. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. My number one is kind of filling that niche of... The party game, the charades type thing, when you've got a whole bunch of people together, and it's like, what do you do that's going to engage everybody that's going to be fun, that the kids will enjoy just as much as the adults? And my number one pick for this category is Telestrations, <laughs> which is the game where everyone, they, you can buy a copy, but you can just play with a pen and paper. Effectively, you have a pen and piece of paper, and there's something you have to draw. So you might be given fireman or something, and you, write, you try and draw your best picture of a fireman. Then you pass it on to the next person and they have to write down what they see. So they know that it's a fireman, they just see a strange picture. It's like, what's this? And they try and write down what it is. But then you sort of flip it over and then you pass what the guess is. So maybe the guess was doctor or something and you pass it on and the next person tries to do a doctor. And there's no real objective of the game. You just, you go round, keep drawing what you do until it gets all the way around and back to you. So the one you started with gets back to you. And then you just look through the um, how the pictures have transformed and the guests have transformed as they've gone round the room. But it's hilarious. It's hard to explain just how much fun this game is until you actually play it. But um, it's better with people who can't draw well. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Whereas something like Pictionary, it work. You know, the people who draw really well are going to do much better and likely win. But with this, it's just so much more fun when you have people who can't draw. So when it gets round to the kids. They'll do these horrendous drawings, and you can see the next adults picking up going, no idea what this is, but then it just makes it so much more fun. They just give their best guess of what it is, and the next person has to draw this crazy guess, you know, spaghetti on fire. How am I supposed to draw that? <laughs> so, uh, or, or they don't know what the word is. They can't quite yes. remember what the word is. You're like, uh, uh, man with pothole, you know? It's something yeah, like that. Right. Um, um, but they just yeah. say what they see, don't they? Yeah, they guess it as best they can. <laughs> But it, I've had so much fun playing this. Yeah, um, yeah, I've played this with kids in the group, and it just makes it much more fun. So including kids in that will make it more fun for you if you do like the game itself. Yeah, I think I really enjoyed it more with a, a wider range than actually people want to try and win at it. <laughs> you, yeah. really. you don't want people to get, go wrong on purpose. No. You want people to go wrong. Yeah. yeah. That's the way the yeah. fun comes in. Yeah, yeah. So kids will go wrong more than adults. Right? Yes. Um, and the pe- person who's an excellent drawer and an excellent guesser won't mess up any of the things, which is absolutely fine. They might really enjoy drawing the best things. Yeah, that's right. You can see them sort of, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just enjoy it. Um, but yeah, it's a great pick. I, I didn't think of it. 
All right. Uh, any honourable mentions? Yeah, you three Rose? mentioned a few I mentioned. So Celestia and Santorini and Cashing Guns all came to my head. One yeah. that I just missed out was The Mind. Because I would like to try it with a kid. <laughs> because um, I think they might... I don't know how it would work, but I think they could get really involved in this. Yeah. Um, and it might be necessarily the kid. It might be more to the adults trying to sink into how the kid's pacing it, or vice versa. But just kind of... It's a game where you kind of self-teach yourself how to do well at. I've played it with Noah. He really likes it. I've not played it with any other kids. Though. Yeah. But so I didn't put it on the list because I know I haven't tried it with kids. I think I've tried all the other ones with uh, kids of, of certain ages in the game. I, I also picked uh, Dimension. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the ball sacking one, yeah, um, yeah. which I've mentioned on a few lists before. But um, an adult will generally beat a kid, but the kid will enjoy playing it and the kid will kind of... It's kind of like you can choose the amount of rules that's going to make it easier or hard for other people playing. So. Yeah. I thought it was an obvious one, King Domino, even though I'm not a massive fan, but I think it's a, it would go down it fairly well in a lot of games. It would not be a game I would like to play. Yeah, I thought, yeah no, that'd be my issue as well. Azul, maybe. And if, if you actually want to choose a an actual kids game, Harbour is usually really good, so there's I'd probably go like something like Rhino Hero, or the stacking ones are quite fun, because yeah, they're yeah, quite... True. They're dexterity, dexterity based, so while they look like kids' games, they're quite hilarious. You're just going, Ugh. I thought you yeah. might have said Ice Cool. I, I thought about Ice Cool, yes. but yeah. Adults, would like, adults like playing Ice Cool, yeah. and kids like playing Ice Cool. That so. is true, yeah, yeah. Um, I had one night Ultimate Werewolf. It didn't make my list mainly because sometimes the kids can be quite bad at it. So the problem is you've got to lie effectively. Yeah. Pretend. But the kids love doing it, so if you have a group of kids sort of organising it so the kids can play with each other, they have a great time. They really do enjoy I, it. I, I bet in, in life, they rarely have to lie in, in, in a structured yes. form. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. They, they, lying is obviously not something you want to teach them, but you want to, you want them, to, you know, so being to say, here's a game where you have to lie to do well. Mm. Like, yeah. The first <laughs> time we, that, first time we, well, the first time Noah played it, you claimed to be his role and he didn't know what to do. He's like, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I was actually at his age. I was kind of the voice of authority and the one who was showing him yeah. right from wrong. And here I was I, I lying was... to his face <laughs> <laughs> about what Noah was as well. It wasn't just uh, yeah, yeah. he didn't know what to do, did he? Okay. It's fun. I've also found uh, Concept uh, fills a similar kind of party game niche, which is the one where a bit like Pictionary, but instead of drawing your putting tokens out on a whole sea of pictures. It's charades on the board. Basically. Yeah, exactly. And I've been surprised, but I found the kids uh, really love it. I played it with um, Noah and his cousins and things, and they have a great time. So I had great success with that one. Um, my other pick for the kind of ticket to ride category would be Takenoko. Mm. Um, the panda yeah. is super cutesy. Um, <laughs> they just really get it. It's very simple. Oh, I have to try and get <clears throat> this set of bamboo shoots together or something. Uh, it's very easy to play, and they pick it up very quickly. So that one works really well. Yeah. If you have any ideas for top fives, because we're struggling to think of new ones every time we do one of these, <laughs> you true. can add it in the comments <laughs> below. Uh, we may or may not use it, but obviously it might give us some inspiration for you to bring something that you'd probably like to see quite a lot. That's a great idea. Yeah, please remember to like and subscribe. We do appreciate it. That would be great. Uh, and if you've got any recommendations for games to play with kids, do let us know in the comments as well. We'd love to see what's Alright, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.